Okay, it started recording. Yep, we got it. Thank okay. you, Rick. Good. We're gonna we're gonna give it two more minutes, you guys, and then we will get started. Um, so, if you haven't already, would you please tell us who you are and what you're doing here and where you're from or any other kind of uh, little information you want to share in the chat? That would be awesome. All right. Well, it is at the top of the hour. And here in my world in Colorado, it's noon. And um, I know that uh, we are spread out all over the world. So we've got um, some fun things to show you today. We're really pleased to have a good crowd with us today. And um, as people come in, we'll just, um, we'll just make space for them. I'm Maria Feith. I am an Associate Director for Skills Commons and Merlot under uh, California State University. And uh, Jerry Hanley, Dr. Hanley is traveling today. He was going to open for us and uh, he got uh, tied up in an airport. And so we're, we're gonna go ahead and get going. Today's discussion is about um, helping to support workforce development and helping to make sure that um, instructors uh, have the opportunity to not only share what they know, but do it in a way that really is impactful and effective for students. And today's session is called Jumpstart to Successful Instruction. And we are gonna spend some time with our new friend, Donna Hanks from um, Western Dakota Tech who has uh, taken this content, this open content, and has done some pretty incredible things. We're very excited to be sh sharing this with you today. Rick, I think you can go to the next slide. Um, Rick uh, Lumadu, who is the magician behind all of the, well, behind the slides and the movement today and the technology on the, on the Zoom platform today. He also is a uh, content specialist for Skills Commons and Merlot. And um, Rick, do you wanna say hello and introduce yourself quickly? Hi everyone, just uh, really happy to be here today and to uh, showcase what Donna's done, some really cool things out there in Dakota. So um, really looking forward to the session today and, um, and being with you all. So thanks Maria. Yeah, you bet, you bet. And we're gonna fully introduce Donna Hanks here in, in just a few minutes, but today it will look like a, a little OER 101. If, um, if you haven't spent a lot of time thinking about um, open educational resources, um, we're gonna give you just a little bit of background knowledge to um, launch from. And if you know quite a bit about OER, we won't bore you, um, but we may be sharing some things that you haven't seen before. I hope so, that's the idea. And then we're going to go straight into the Jumpstart course, which is a, um, it is a, a, a course that came out of need to help instructors. And so we'll share some more about that in, a, in just a bit. Q and A could happen at any time. Feel free to put your questions in the chat at any time um, if it makes sense for us to open the mic up for you, just raise your hand and, and we'll, we'll make sure that um, we've got an exchange that, that works for everybody. And then, and then a closing. So we've got a, a, a lot happening in a short period of time. So without further ado, Rick, let's look at the first poll, shall we? 
Got it. Hopefully Thank everyone you. can see that there. I'm seeing it. And if you would be so kind as to please select a choice, uh, what dis which d best describes your role? Instructor at a four-year community or tech college, leadership at the same, local workforce development, nonprofit training, for-profit training, or other. Hey, what's it looking like? I'm not seeing the um, results on we my got, end. We've got 41 of 49 people have already uh, submitted their responses. Good. Good. So 83%. Good. And so, where's the majority you, coming from? Yeah, the majority are instructors at a four-year community college or community college or technical college, like 48%. And then um, leadership at a four-year is at 28%. Eight. And um, local workforce development, two percent, and the rest are around two to anywhere from two to five. The, the bottom five or four. Fantastic. Well, we're we're happy, very happy to see the instructors and leaders from um, education and also workforce development, the WIB folks that uh, are here. We appreciate you and Department of Labor. Um, how about the next poll, Rick? Okay, you got it. Here we go. Great. Which best describes your experience with open educational resources or OER? We're trying to get a feel for whether or not um, you have some background with it, whether you've used it, if this is the first time you've kind of um, started to entertain the idea about using OER to help reduce the costs in education. Yeah, this one's built up a lot faster, Maria. There's 58% um, <laughs> of the responses have used OER, 29% would like to learn how. So that's 13 people or 13 of the participants and then six participants, um, what is OER? So okay. Okay. new for them. That's not, that's not unusual, fair enough. Thank you yeah. so much. Okay, all right, so let's move forward, Rick. Yep. And I'm gonna pass this over to you and Rick is gonna share with us a little bit about um, a little background in OER so that folks who are, are still learning or wanna know more will have a, a little better understanding. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Maria. And um, I'm really excited about what we have to share with you here on what is OER and why are they important. And if you get the, a copy of the um, presentation um, you will actually be able to get the link to this course um, that we developed in SoftChalk, uh, used in SoftChalk Cloud. So you can actually um, access this for free uh, online. Um, Maria may even be able to put it in the chat, um, the link to it. And it's got basically 101 OER, everything you need to know. Um, we built this course um, last year. We shared it at a OLC Innovate Conference. And guess what? It actually won best in track. So that's pretty cool. Um, but what's really neat is, and we're excited about, is it's basically a one stop for all your questions about OER. Why, what is it? Why is it important? Um, why would you even be interested in it? Um, there's a lot of great content in OER. Um, like anything that, that's new and starts out for, you know, fresh for the first time, you know, there's always questions about quality and things like that. Um, and, you know, this is something in my discipline and whatnot, but um, I think you'll find that after um, many years of uh, educators um, and, and other movements like Merlot, the um, Multimedia Educational, Educational Resources for Learning and Online Teaching Repository um, has provided just a wealth of information around OER, as well as others like OER Commons and OpenStax, these names you might've heard of. Um, but OER material is so great now that it's, it's gone under, um, a lot of it has gone under um, quality assurance methods. Um, and with Merlot, for example, it has a, a rating system with editorial boards that so that you can know that when you go in and look for something, you can see how many stars it has. Um, and then if it had editor, editor ratings, as well as the user end user ratings. And so um, that makes it really, um, 
you know, you can have confidence that what you're going to use is going to be a quality um, resource material for you. And so um, I would encourage you, if you still have questions about what is OER, um, it's basically it's open education. It's, it's resources that you can use freely. Now, um, the question then comes up is, how can I apply it? Well, because it's OER, you can reuse it. You can revise it, retain, redistribute, and remix it. And um, this helps you to reduce costs. For example, you need a course in um, biology or something in workforce development and workforce training, something around machining or, or uh, uh, nursing. Um, within the Skills Commons um, repository, all the content in there is um, CC by license, which means it has a, uh, a license that is, allows you to freely reuse it. It's a Creative Commons. Um, by license, which is an attribution license. So basically you can take that and reuse it, remix it and repurpose it and redistribute it and, and send it out to your students or colleagues and things like that. And then that way they will be able to use that material. Um, and you can basically just cite the author, the original author, whoever created it. And that's what you're going to see today in real life with Donna and her presentation, how she was able to take the jumpstart courses that were in Skills Commons and repurpose them for their purposes out there in um, Western Dakota to uh, basically um, use it as they needed to. And so we have information as well around licensing and copyrights and all that stuff, you know, who owns the copyright and what is licensing and how can we use it? And so um, with the licensing, um, of, of, of the CC by license, that material, again, allows you to basically do anything you want with that material, um, the CC by license with the content and skills comments. Um, there's other licenses like, you know, you can um, create a derivative, but you uh, must share and share alike is one of the other licenses, or there's no commercial, like you can't sell it, for example, um, but you can still use it but you just have to do the attribution and not sell it and that sort of thing. Um, so um, a lot of neat things around um, OER, where can I find OER? And I would just encourage you guys um, around this to go into this soft chalk course that we developed. And we've got links, not just to Skills Commons and to Merlot stuff, but also the OpenStax, the stuff that's out there in other repositories, it's OER. It's really, this is just the one, stop shop for your OER needs and where you can find OER and reuse it, okay? Um, we also talk about how to reuse OER, and that's one of the other bullet points we have. And so basically we're gonna have a case study in that today with what Donna's done. And so we have a whole page on what you can do from a, a very uh, minimal, um, you know, changing it and remixing it to a full, over overhaul of the course kind of like think about like home and garden tv where they have you know um extreme makeover home edition and so you know taking things that are maybe in, in a pdf and expanding them out and taking the video links and then actually embedding them as you see here like our, this is our director dr jerry hanley but you think of a of a tutorial or another video the professor made and you can actually embed it into a course system similar to soft drop cloud or if your institution is using a learning management system, the same thing. So we talk about that in this in this course as well here. And so um, taking full advantage of that. Um, and then what about others? How are others using, reusing OER? I think that's a big question is like, am I on an island here by myself? Um, you can get a lot of great inspiration and advice from folks that are reusing OER, as well as from Donna today, Donna is gonna show show us what they did. And I'm really looking forward to be inspired by Donna and what she's done. And so with no further ado, I think I'll turn it over to you, Maria, and you can do the formal introduction of Donna. And um, thank you. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. And as you can see, that's a very brief overview of um, OER. We are, um, we're kind of um, passionate about that whole thing because we're, what we're really passionate about is providing opportunity for learning and for training and um, a 
pathways to improved wages and um, being able to um, be self-sufficient. And so OER is one of the ways that we believe and we see education being able to um, take it in that direction. There are not a lot of places for education to cut costs and we know that, but material costs can be reduced. And so we're gonna talk with you today about one way to help reduce the cost in supporting and promoting um, instructor efficacy across, um, across disciplines. So Donna Hanks is here with us today and, and uh, Donna will tell you a little more about her story, but, but she came across Jumpstart uh, when she was at a conference and she was needing something just like this to help the instructors at Western Dakota Tech. She's been there since 2004. Um, and she started out as business and technology instructor and she did that for 14 years. And um, at that time, during that time, she was face-to-face -face as well as online. So she's had those same, um, both sides of the, of the row experience. In 2018, she moved into instructional um, technology and design for the Office of Teaching and Learning there at Western Dakota Tech. And her primary responsibility is developing and coordinating, facilitating faculty development and training programs for new and existing and adjunct faculty. So it's the, the broad the spectrum of instructors there. She has designed methodology courses for new faculty to satisfy mentorship and credentialing requirements. And she's going to share more with us about that today. Donna, take it away. Well, thank you for having me. Um, this is um, really kind of fun because um, a lot of this has um, transpired by uh, circumstances that were um, circumstances that were by chance and have turned into be very productive and effective um, for 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 us and I, I hope for uh, Maria and Richard too. So thank you for having me and thank you to everyone that. Um, made time to be here today because I know you have busy schedules and you probably could have gone to something else um, other than this. So thank you for being here. Um, when I first discovered this, Maria's right, I, I discovered the Skills Commons and particularly this Jumpstart resource um, back in 2018 when I attended um, the NISOD conference in Austin, Texas. And NISOD, if, in case you're not familiar, stands for the National Institute for Staff and Organizational Development. It's a great conference. And this particular session was on the last day of the conference in the very last time slot. And I almost didn't go. <laughs> I almost opted to go pack up and get ready to leave. And for whatever reason, circumstances were such that I went. And I was so happy that I ended up going because this this has just completely fit and helped us um, redesign, repurpose, and provide meaningful training um, for our faculty. So, um, you know, if you think about that by chance circumstance, fast forward now four years, and this webinar collaboration came upon us in a little bit similar fashion in that I reached out to Maria and I didn't know Maria, I just had her contact and I said, hey, can you check on a link for me in one of these classes? And she said, well, sure. How are you using these resources? And we had a real casual exchange. I made a, a brief little screencast video to show her how we're using it. One exchange led to another and here we are um, sharing these resources with you. So um, it's fun for me to be able to share best practices um, I like to learn best practices from others as well. And um, I got to tell you, I just came back from the Higher Learning Commission conference last week in Chicago, and I was able to visit with folks from a variety of schools. And there's just a lot of us out there that don't have structured training programs for faculty, much less new faculty, and don't have access to a lot of resources and don't have funding for a lot of extra resources. So I shared with them um, about this and I hope that for you today, if you fit into that category and just have challenges in the resources you have or don't have, 
um, and the funding that hopefully by uh, the end of this, we've given you some nuggets to consider and use today. I mean, you can start using these um, today. Um, and if there's any of you out there that maybe could have done something else with your time, hopefully like the experience I had at NYSOD, I hope that this time ends up being well spent and that we are able to help you um, with a lot of your training needs. So in the next couple of slides, if you want to go ahead and, and um, move slides, Richard, Richard, that would be great. I'm going to just kind of show you um, how this all came to be, why this all came to be, and, and again, hopefully just give you some nuggets to take away. So if you want to go to the next slide, actually, Richard, sorry. Um, uh, do you want to um, slip that poll three right here, or do you want to wait and do that? We can do that. Yeah. Let's try it. Rick, do you want to post poll three for us? All right. What are some challenges in developing and maintaining new, in, new instructor training resources? Is it time to develop, cost, instructor time to complete, making sure people are accountable? or the impact that the training has on delivery of instruction. <clears throat> How's it look, Rick? It's got uh, it's going pretty fast on the responses. We're at 34 of 59 participants. Um, but so far it looks like um, the time required to develop training material has over 53%. Cost of training materials is at 10%. That's uh, got 10% um, of the responses. Instructor time required to complete the training is at 17%. So that's a, the next, I would say that's the second most um, needed area. And then um, assessment and accountability and training's impact on teaching methods. Those are both at 12%. So, um, okay, so a lot of you are in the right place, people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Um, so the whole why behind um, why did we start using this? Um, one of my first projects when I when I took on the role of instructional technology and design specialist was to revamp our methodology courses for new faculty. And this was based on feedback we were getting from those faculty. And it was based on feedback that we were really seeing in ourselves um, in just the, the product of the process. Um, the content wasn't meaningful um, to faculty. Um, the faculty felt like it was more busy work, that they weren't getting much out of it that they could apply in the classroom. Um, it wasn't sustainable. We were using um, an external source, an instructor to provide some of this training. So we were paying for it. And um, it just, we could tell it just wasn't meeting our needs. So it was, it's time to revamp. And, um, and so having this on my mind, attending that NYSOD conference and being introduced to this product and this resource was so exactly what we needed. And the content was meaningful. And like a lot of you can probably relate to here at Western Dakota Tech, we are a technical college. And so our faculty, we hire, um, from their industry expertise. We hire them for that. Um, we don't hire them necessarily for their, their teaching experience. We hire them because they can weld and they, they are a nurse and they can uh, be an HVAC uh, tech and surge techs. And so um, part of that is being able to take their expertise and then provide them the training support and resources they need to be effective instructors in the classroom. And that's exactly where this jumpstart to successful instruction fits in. The, the original name of it was industry expert to expert instructor. And it's exactly what it does is it, it takes what they're an expert in and helps spin it around and be that um, effective instructor in the classroom. And so when I learned about the topics that I'm gonna show you here in a little bit, uh, I just, it was a great fit for us. And so we wanted courses that were going to be meaningful and engaging um, for, for faculty. So that's why I incorporated VoiceThread. Um, I don't know if, if any of you are out there familiar with VoiceThread, um, but VoiceThread is a, a cloud-based learning tool 
that allows users to create media albums. And so the album can be a PowerPoint slide, a, a Word document, PDF, an Excel spreadsheet, an image, a video. It can be all sorts of different file formats that then you can communicate um, asynchronous, asynchronously with one another. And um, you can collaborate, you can um, ask questions, provide meaningful feedback, and have really rich information exchanges with one another out there. So we have been using this product already um, since 2009, I believe. And so it just made sense to me um, when we came back and started working on these classes to take the jumpstart information, combine it with VoiceThread, and we've, we've got a, a really great uh, program now. And I equate it to uh, what happened back in 1928 when the lonely jar of peanut butter collided with the innocent candy bar and gave us our now Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> um, it's the same, I mean, uh, that synergy at work here. And for those of you old enough, there used to be a commercial like that that had the jar of peanut butter colliding with the candy bar. So that's why I referenced that. So anyway, that's what we've got going on here is two really great products that are effective all by themselves but just had some magical things happen um, when we combined them. So on this next slide, I'm going to introduce you to the, the courses that we created. Um, these, are, these are two courses that are part of um, a two-year mentorship program that we have put together for our new faculty. So we've got Ed 211, which is Methods of Instruction, and Ed215 Methods of Instructional Design. And these courses are required for all new full-time faculty. They are optional for, um... oh, look, George is here. Hi, George. I know George from VoiceThread, so I'm glad he could be here. Um, so they're uh, required for full-time faculty, um, new, and they're optional for existing and adjunct faculty. And we do have, a lot of folks that are optional with this take these courses. And so for Ed 211, we use the jumpstart resources of developing consistent communications, defining student learning competencies and Bloom's quick sheets, connecting learning objective competencies, um, creating course climate, the why of how you are teaching, active learning, creative um, effective ass assignments, and fair and balanced formative and um, summative assessments. And again, these are all topics that are available out there in um, the Jumpstart series. And then Ed215, Methods of Instructional Design, this is the second course they take, diving deeper into adult learning, um, learning theories, plan for issues and potential solutions in classroom management. That's probably one of my favorite topics because it creates such a dynamic conversation. Um, Student-centered learning, um, accommodations, meeting learners' needs, collaborative learning problem, and project-based learning, and the learning cycle. So um, the first course our faculty take in the second eight weeks of the fall semester, and then Ed215 they take in the second eight weeks of the spring semester. And so what I'm going to do is show you, these are the courses, I'm going to just show you the overview of a module layout and what it looks like. And then once I do the overview, I'm, I'm gonna actually take you out to our LMS and show you what it looks like um, out there. And if you have any questions along the way as I go through this, please feel free to ask and interrupt because um, I think it's more meaningful if I can answer your question in, in the real time. So the module layout, um, I took a topic like I outlined in that previous slide and created a module around it and tried to chunk the information. And so each module starts with a welcome and an introduction, and then a checklist of tasks that, that the instructor will complete in that module. And again, I'll show you that here in just a little bit. Um, within each module, then I provide a link um, to the Skills Commons Industry Expert to Expert Instructor, also known as now the Jumpstart resources, I provide a link to that so that they can go out and review that material. And that takes them right out to the Skills Commons resource. And then if I have any other supplemental resources that I've brought in to complement that module, I provide that. And then 
outside of the Skills Common resource, then around that, I created a 10 question online quiz that they take. And that quiz is based on the Jumpstart resource. Um, so if you go out and you use these resources, because everything I'm showing you today is now available um, in Skills Commons. Um, so if you end up using these quizzes, make sure you review them because some of my questions um, are uh, specific to Western Dakota Tech. So you'll, you're gonna wanna make sure you look at the questions, but I create that quiz and that also kind of helps me see that they did go out and in fact review the um, material. And then once they're done with the Skills Commons resource and the quiz, then I create this voice thread discussion around this topic. And, um, and I will show you what that looks like as well but instructors are prompted um, to answer some questions themselves. And then the, the idea is to then go reply to another post and create this conversation um, and collaborate around this topic. And so um, how I score all of this is then they get their 10 point quiz question. And then I've created a 25 point uh, rubric that scores all of the work that they've done um, in that module. And I will show you that as well. That's available um, in the syllabus. And then I also embed it within our LMS so it, we can um, grade each module pretty efficiently. And then at the end of every module, I have, what do I do next? And that just tells them then basically go to the next module. So from here, I think Richard's going to let me share my screen so that I can show you what this looks like in our LMS. Okay, Donna, I've just made you host, so you should be able to share. I'm going to okay. stop sharing on my screen, so you should be able to. All right, so you should see a screen right now that says Ed 215 Methods of Instructional Design at the top. Yep. We good on that? Okay, so this is the course homepage when you log into the course. It just, and I've included here um, a brief explanation of what Skills Commons is and, and where it comes from and why we're using it. Um, and then within this course, I'm just going to show you in the syllabus section, I, I've got our instructor syllabus and a course calendar. And I'm actually gonna take you out and show you both of those documents so that if you choose to use these, you'll know what information is available. Um, so in the instructor syllabus, I'm not going to go through this line by line. I did just want to show you, though, um, I kind of break out the voice thread component of this and then what each module uh, topic is and what the expectations are. You're going to see that there's some modules where they have a total of four posts that they have to make. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. Um, but also out here is the rubric that I was talking about. This is the 25 point rubric I use to score all of the work that's done within uh, each module. And um, so that's available, use as you see fit, um, make it work for what works for you. And then the other document I wanted to show you is I have a course calendar out here developed for the eight weeks. And this is in an Excel document. And what I like about this and why I wanted to show you, um, and this too is available um, to you to use, is so this started for me, this is the, the course I'm teaching right now and it started uh, the week of March 13th. But if I'm gonna teach this this summer, um, because this is in Excel and the way we've got it set up, I can just go to this first cell here in the Excel document and change the date. So this would be the week of May 29th starting. And it just changes all the dates for you automatically through the calendar. And so you can just change your dates, update them, and then you leave the, the, the tasks um, due on the particular days the same. You'll notice each module starts on the Monday, quizzes are due on Wednesdays, um, initial voice thread posts are due on Thursdays, and then replies are due on Sundays. And I just keep with that format throughout the eight weeks so that they know what to expect they can plan if they're going to be out of town um, or off campus, and they just know what's expected throughout the eight weeks of the course. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to the class. Um, and again, if you have any questions, I'm happy to 
to answer some of those. Then the introduction module, um, I introduce them to the course, introduce myself, and then we go through an introduction activity. And this is where they first get um, introduced to VoiceThread. And I have them read this article over here, what will students remember from your class in 20 years? And we talk about that and just start introducing um, how VoiceThread works. And you'll notice down here at the bottom, and this is the true for every module, and I'll show you module one, that I try to give them a sneak peek of what they can expect once they get out to VoiceThread. So if they click on this image, it just brings up the slide that will have their prompts on it so they can prepare their thoughts before they actually get out to the assignment. And that seems to be helpful um, based on the feedback that we're getting. Um, and so that's the introduction module, but I wanna show you how then each module is laid out. So we're gonna go into module one, and this is kind of complementing that overview that I explained here just a bit ago. So again, I've got a module uh, or a welcome to each module on what we're going to cover. In this particular module, we're gonna talk about adult learning and adult learning theories. And then if you just scroll down the page, there's my checklist. These are the tasks. And there, there's not a lot of tasks to do here. And that's by design. We don't want to overwhelm them with work when they're in their first year of teaching and they're overwhelmed enough. So there's not a ton going on here, but I, I think the beauty of it really lands on the discussion we have about the topic. And so the first item um, on the checklist is to go out and review the skills common to skills commons topic. Um, once they do that, then they go uh, number two here is and complete that module quiz. And once they've done that and they're familiar with the material, uh, then they go out to the coursework part of the assignments and start the voice thread assignment. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Then they review everyone's post, respond to at least one, and then submit their voice thread assignment for that module. So that's the checklist. And then under the module content is just all the detail behind how to complete the items in the checklist. And I have also included all this information out in, our, in the Skills Commons resources that I've shared too. So this is all out there for you as well. And so here's the detail under module content. And then you'll notice over here under bookmarks, I've got a link um, that takes me out to the Skills Common resource. And uh, Richard, Maria, is it okay if I click on that and kind of show them what this resource looks like? Okay. So that, this is where, what happens and you just Self click on it and it kind of walks you through expert to expert um, a self-paced um, little assessment here expert by expert clicking next. It's got drag and drop functionality and you just kind of click through it and learn but about just, all the material. Well, let's take a look at the difference. So that's what that is. And again, it's self-paced. They can click their way through it. Um, and it has drag and drop features. They have to answer some questions, things like that. And then that quiz that I created is all based off of um, that material. And then once they finish all that up, then they come down here and they participate in the voice thread discussion. And again, I've included a a slide here that shows what the prompts will be. And in each discussion, I pull an image from the Skills Common resource. So that looks familiar with what they just went through. And then I created some prompts here for them um, to have a conversation about. And so I'm going to take you out and show you what that looks like um, as an assignment. And then again, here down here, I just say, what do you do next? But let's go up to coursework. Um, and show you what that looks like. And our LMS is a Genzibar product. So in case you're not familiar with that, that's what, that, what our LMS is. I'm gonna to go to this first one, diving deeper in adult learning voice thread and just show you um, what that looks like out here. Might take just a second to get pulled up here. Here we go. All right, so here's the thread. And this is just a video of me giving some overview introduction 
kind of summarizing what we learned in that skills commons assessment. And then here are the prompts. And then what instructors do then is they come down here and they can make a video post, an audio post. Um, you can actually make a phone call to access this if you need to, or a text post. I encourage and really support all faculty using a video post here. Um, and you'll, I'm gonna show you some feedback and features and benefits of that here in a little bit. But it just really ups the engagement and, Im and improves the richness of the information shared out here and really has increased the level of engagement tenfold um, compared to what we had. So um, in, in doing this, it creates a really great collaboration discussion, Q&A about what instructors are doing in the classroom. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna show you in one of our slides here coming up, what it looks like when more people have made a comment. So you can get a feel for what that, what that looks like. But before I do that, I did wanna show you, here is the rubric that I just embedded in our LMS. And so um, when you're going through and reviewing the discussion and correcting, um, this makes it for super efficient grading um, um, within each module. And then I'll just click to module two to just um, really prove my point of every module looks the same. Checklist, module content, the voice thread slide, resources over here on the right. Donna, let me interrupt you for just yeah. a second. Um, just to reiterate, what the benefit behind that consistency for your instructors. Of the module layout? Oh, for sure. Um, because navigating um, takes up cognitive uh, load in your brain and research shows us, tells us over and over again, um, the more consistent you can be on your, on your layout, on your language, um, the, the easier it is going to be for them to just really gain the learning that you're wanting them to learn. And so between both courses, Ed 211 and Ed 215, they look exactly the same module to module, yeah. All right, so with that, um, I think we're ready to go back to the, um, the PowerPoint, Richard. Just wanna make sure I said everything I wanted to say here. And are there any questions? I kind of went through some of that quickly, I think, but. Yeah, Donna, if you could stop sharing your screen and then I'll go back to the PowerPoint. Yes. Okay, thanks. Um, there we go. All right, so this is what the voice thread looks like um, once you've had conversation going. So over here on the left-hand side, this is um, the avatars that uh, contain all the, the posts from the the faculty members. And there's a variety of settings that you can use within VoiceThread, um, but I just wanna explain that like this square uh, post here for CD, um, that's the initial post. And then you can set this up to thread uh, comments. So this, this person that responded that has a circle here, that's a direct reply to whoever posted under CD. And um, it just creates a very dynamic and collaborative exchange out here. And if you look down here on the bottom of the screen where it says 4121, that means we have 41 minutes of conversation going on out here about adult learning theories and how they're using these four principles of adult learning in their classroom. And I'm just telling you, you can't get that, um, you can't get that level of rich information um, all the time in a straight discussion board. You could do this in a discussion board if that's the, the format you want to use. So I don't want to discourage that. I'm just saying when you can put it into an environment like this, it raises the level of engagement so much to the point where faculty end up looking forward to coming out here and making their post and responding to other people. And so, you know, you don't have to use VoiceThread, highly recommend it because I love it, but regular discussion boards, um, Flipgrid is a similar tool to VoiceThread. I will just say, 
um, that VoiceThread does provide uh, a variety of workshops, free workshops for you to learn um, how to use the product. It's available in an individual site or an individual license, or you can incorporate it as a, as a site license to your school. We did opt for the site license back in 2018 um, because with that, you get some closed captioning features and it's just been great for our school. So um, that's why I push, I push voice, voice thread so much. Um, and so any, any questions about um, that? Oh, I do see a, a question here. Do we have faculty that have trouble? Um, yes, I mean, we do. There's a learning curve to that. And I'll talk to, it, talk to you two more about that in some of the feedback I got with some of these courses. It's like with anything, um, we got to teach them how to use it and continue to provide the support and to help them build confidence in using it. And our use, we get usage reports every month on, on how many slides are created, how many comments are made, and it just continues to go up year after year. And if the pandemic has taught us anything is that these tools can be used not only in an online format, but also in face-to-face -face hybrid, all sorts of delivery, course delivery formats. So, all right, so on this next slide, I'm just gonna read through some of the features and benefits that we've experienced in using the, the Jumpstart resources along with the VoiceThread. Um, but the features are, these are online methodology courses. They're eight weeks in length. Um, they are engaging in how we've been able to develop them um, and collaborative. And the topics are relevant. So going back to the challenge we had of, um, you know, faculty didn't think that they were um, meaningful and it wasn't time well spent. Well, we've, we've fixed that. And, and if I remember back to the poll that we took, um, and some of the, the time, cost, and impact, I think you're going to find that these resources are going to, to overcome those challenges that you're having. And VoiceThread has a mobile app. And so um, if faculty are busy and if they are traveling, um, I still, this is not a self-paced course. This course has due dates. And so they do get docked if they don't turn their work in on time. And so the mobile app allows them flexibility too. And some of the benefits that we have, you know, we have faculty learning from faculty and being in technical education, you know, programs really feel the uniqueness of their, their expertise and their technical program. And they feel like they are unique in some of the things. And what happens is, um, you know, I have diesel instructors and nursing instructors and auto tech and search tech, they're all in the same class and they realize we are really more alike than we are different. I have um, a diesel instructor that had an employability rubric that the nursing faculty thought would be helpful to her. So they shared that. Um, one of my favorite stories that's happening this semester is faculty learning from faculty. We had a search tech instructor talking about an active learning strategy where she was trying to produce a surgical procedure as a kind of a DIY project at home and recreating this procedure and was talking about how she used felt um, for skin. So students had to cut through the felt and get to the procedure. And I have a, a paramedic instructor in the class as well. And he heard her post and he responded and said, oh, I gotta hook you up with our program director because, and I'm showing you this, he has a recipe to make skin. So this is uh, skin that our paramedic program uses and this tube throughout it, they use for IVs. So he shared the recipe to make skin with our search tech instructor. And now she's creating her uh, little amplified surgical procedures using this skin recipe, which I thought was um, amazing. And I think it's um, just something special in technical education that you're not going to find that um, everywhere. And so faculty learning from faculty, it creates community. New faculty are here. They're seeing each other out in these voice thread conversations. And when they go to all staff meetings or campus events, they see familiar faces and it brings them together. So our nursing faculty are completely in a different building than our diesel faculty, but because of this, it creates a sense of community and gets them talking to each other 
in these campus events and I've seen it happen. And then I hear him talk about it on VoiceThread and you just, you can't, you can't make that up. That's just some really great things happening as a byproduct of these, of these tools. And the technology tools, this is teaching them things that they can then take back to their classroom as well. Um, so that's their learning as they're using and they're learning in a safe environment so they can work out some of the bugs here from the student's perspective, which will give them confidence to go then use it as a faculty member and teach their own students. Um, it's very cost effective faculty development. These are free resources that I'm just using with the resources we have at school. So it's been great. Um, and the magic is when you have seasoned faculty and this happened when these courses first started, the seasoned faculty started saying, hey, I'm hearing about these courses you're teaching. Can I take these two? Um, because that almost never happens. So that's some of the magic that happens behind that. Uh, some of the feedback though, I wanna share that with you that we get directly from the faculty members. These are typed comments that I have gotten um, in the course uh, evaluations at the end of the semester. Um, so some of the pros that they liked were the, the consistent layout. They liked the consistency and the expectation from week to week. They felt like it was a manageable pace, uh, flexibility and being able to take it online. Um, they enjoyed learning and collaborating with other faculty. They appreciated not only the student to student um, interaction, but also the, the instructor to student interaction, which is really important in online education right now. They liked the topics. They th thought they were relevant and promoted growth. And they liked VoiceThread as a tool um, for online classes. Some of the cons here, they said technology curve was steep in the beginning. So that just means we provide a lot of how-to videos on how to make these comments, how to make things happen. I have a lot of videos embedded in helping them make that, um, that switch to using that technology and getting comfortable and making videos. Um, they did say four posts in a week was a lot. And I think I showed you that, that there are a couple weeks where they had four posts. When that feedback was given, one of those weeks to do four, four posts was the last week, which is when they were doing finals as well. So it was a lot for them. So I just moved it up farther into or earlier into the class and I don't get any feedback like that anymore. Um, having to arrange to make a video post can be challenging and that is true, um, but it's, it's just part of, of it. Um, hard to reply to others when we wait till the last minute to post. Uh, my, my fix to that was on the grading rubric, in order to get five on when you submit, you have to submit before the due date. And then too much online technology when I teach in the classroom. Again, if the pandemic has taught us anything is the technology in the classroom actually enhances learning. So, um, so that's my bit in a nutshell, I hope you found the information helpful. I do want to thank Maria and Richard for having me. And if there are any questions here in these last minutes, um, I would love to be helpful to you. So thank you. Anna, that's awesome. You've done so much good work and we appreciate your sharing. We're going to show you how to find this material and give you a little uh, bit of a um, face to face uh, interaction with Jumpstart. And so, Rick, want to do a little demo? Here we go. Um, does that blow that up a little bit? Is that better, Bria? Can everybody see that okay, I think? Looks good. A big enough yeah. font. Okay. So this is a Jumpstart um, website or web page on our um, Skills Commons website. And I'm um, sure you'll get that in the chat window as well as it's on the screen. I mean, the PowerPoint um, presentation in the notes as well. But this is the landing page. Um, so a little bit of background on what the Jumpstart is. And you've heard a lot about that already. Um, here's some interviews with people that have used it, much like Donna, but other folks that have used it in their institutions. And then there's um, Jumpstart to successful instruction based on the different purposes. And so this is kind of phase two of Jumpstart. It initially was, you know, training experts, um, uh, industry experts teaching in career and tech ed, but then it moved to uh, training in industry training. So, if, um, for example, you're uh, a machine shop or you're a nursing school or whatever, 
and you're training at a hospital or whatever, this is to help those industry experts in that environment. And then um, one specifically for higher education. And so, for example, they all basically look the same as far as module layouts. So you can kind of come in here as Donna had showed you already and view the content and it'll play right in your browser. Um, in um, response to what Donna was saying earlier about her, uh, she had put all of her content that she created um, for her lessons and for her instructors into Skills Commons. And so we have those quickly available for you right here via links. So this is the 211 is the first uh, first modules that she created her first course. And then 215 is that second uh, course with all the modules and then the discussion prompts and PowerPoints and things like that. So those are all there easily available for you on the Jumpstart um, website. Uh, course page in, in the website. Maria, would you like to say anything more around um, the Jumpstart course? Rick, yeah. Would you just click into the higher ed course? Okay. So um, just a very brief little background. This course came about because we um, had instructors, there were complaints across the country that instructors were not enjoying themselves and and we were going to lose them the attrition rate was high we could the retention rate was low and um, they needed better support than what higher ed was giving them and so um and and higher ed needed the subject matter experts so so a group of um, instructional designers came together and refined a, a basic course that had been written by one of our folks, um, Brenda Perea, who is um, brilliant at this kind of work, and refined it through, a, 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 through Skills Commons and a technology company to provide it via uh, this storyline uh, platform. It is accessible directly from Skills Commons. Rick, just click into any one of those in the preview. So click on the preview when you come here and you can um, use the course directly from Skills Commons. You do not have to download it. However, if you choose, because this is open, you can download the course, change the branding to your college or your uh, construction company or your, um, your web and then share it that way, you, all you have to do is give a CC attribution and um, we're, we can share with you how to do that. All, just, all you need to do is co connect with us and we will point you in th that direction. So uh, I want you to be aware that it's not necessary for you to download and then um, and use it in your own um, LMS. You can use it right from here unless you choose otherwise. So, and that's just absolutely fine. And Rick, will you go back one? Donna has graciously shared her content with us and, and this is all the supplemental material as Rick mentioned. Um, and it's labeled by module. So they are, um, it's um, associated with the modules that are in the higher ed course. We do not have supplemental materials yet for um, the CTE or for, um, or I'm sorry, for um, uh, the industry. Sorry, yes, the um, industry trainers. Uh, however, right with the work that Donna has done. And if any of you have, um, have done some work with Jumpstart and would, or would like to be able to begin um, developing some more material, we would love to be a partner with you in that. As you can see, the Jumpstart course is divided into three sections with 101 kind of uh, what you need to know before week one. And 102 takes a deeper dive into delivery of instruction. Am I connecting with students? And 103 is really more about the teaching learning cycle. It's a little more upper end and uh, gives people a, a deeper dive into thinking about what does it take to be a truly effective, masterful teacher. Uh, and as, as many of you probably are aware, it takes a lifetime <laughs> for one thing, but it also takes a lot of skills that are very specific that can be learned. And so, um, so that let's back all the way out of there, Rick, and go to the last poll. Okay. Yep. Now our instructional, our instructional designers, uh, 
like Donna, um, are, were very are very uh, talented, and um, they're the ones who who um, helped put this course together, and we led that effort. However, they worked hand in hand with a technology partner. Um, Microburst Learning is the one who actually put the jumpstart, the original um, jumpstart course together. We work with lots of technology partners who can do similar work for you. O'Donnell Learn, in fact, is um, one of the groups that really could take this content and help embed those high activity engagement tools like VoiceThread and other tools that will help um, um, Nearpod, for example, that will help really um, bring the learner to the forefront and help the instructors understand, model for them how to deliver those same kinds of, of practices to their students, as well as uh, help them gain the confidence and understanding about what does good teaching look like. So um, the Rhea, last- I'm not finding that last not poll. Seeing the last I'm poll. Not see, well, I'm not seeing the opportunity, you know, the, um, okay. what I wanna say, the, the option to, to select it. Just give me a second. I'm gonna stop share for a minute okay. and okay. see if it's part of this. Um, no worries at all. While, while Rick yeah. is looking for that one last poll, are there any questions, anything that you would like to share with us? It looks like Rick has answered. Um, the question about um, being part of an LMS family, it is not. It is, it's a standalone that you can embed into your LMS or run right from Skills Commons. So um, we think that provides some really good uh, flexibility. And again, you don't have to house it. Your, your um, institution doesn't have to have the space for it. We've got you covered on that. Hey, Maria, I'm not seeing it, but I see That's we're at the okay, top Rick. of the hour anyways, but I think no we're good. Worries. Thank yeah. you so much, Donna. Yes, Maria, Donna, we, you. we so appreciate you. And, um, and Rick and I will, um, will be here to support you and others as you choose to use Skills Commons and the Jumpstart courses. You yeah. can find us at um, support at skillscommons.org. And please feel free to reach out. Very happy to see everybody here today. Thank you again. Thank you, everyone.